Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an introduction to Regenix Tech. This is Trevor Brucato with RB Milestone Group, the US-based investor relations firm. Regenix is listed in Canada on the CSE under the symbol RGX, and in the US on the OTCQB under the symbol RGXTF. Joining us today is the company's president, Don Weatherby, who will be providing an introduction of the company for investors new to the Regenix story. Following Don's presentation, we'll be addressing questions that have been submitted during the registration process and those submitted live. If you are interested in asking a question, you can submit them in the Zoom Q&A module. Please note this presentation is being recorded today, May 14th, 2024, and will be made available on the company's website at regenix.tech. Following today's event, the company's investor survey will be live and will be emailed to all stakeholders. The results will develop trends on Regenix's perceived strengths, weaknesses, and milestones, milestones which will be very helpful in strengthening the company's investor communications efforts and guide the focus of upcoming events. So your participation will be very much appreciated. Please note today's presentation may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties that may be out of Regenix's control and should not be construed as a recommendation to uh, buy or sell any security. Moreover, due to regulations, Regenix is limited in its ability to disclose additional forward-looking statements or uh, financial information. For the company's full disclaimer, please visit their website at regenix.tech. Lastly, RB Milestone is not a registered investment advisor or broker-dealer. For more information on us, please visit rbmilestone.com. And now it is my pleasure to turn it over to Regenix's president, Don Weatherby. Don, the stage is yours. Thank you, Trevor. So I'd like to take this opportunity to take you through um, a portion of what uh, Regenix is about. Uh, I plan to hit a few different areas. One is our technology, that we are commercially ready. We have a proprietary eco-friendly technology for the extraction of platinum and palladium from diesel catalytic converters. Uh, we have successively been able to marry both the chemistry side and the mechanical physical processes. We have a strategic partnership with Davis Recycling to ensure the future supply for future expansion and to have strong relationships with industry participants. There's growing global demand for PGMs and there's an opportunity for increased uh, involvement. We also have the ability for a rapid development process and be able to expand from our current module one to four modules in the United States. We have a a team of innovation that allows us to continue to grow. And we have married that with a historical expertise in material processing. How did we get here? We started this project in catalytic converters in 2020, and we began our lab research. We, provide, we undertook hundreds of tests to determine whether or not the process would work. And from that, we decided to move to the next step in 2021, a pilot plant. We constructed a 25 kilogram pilot plant and eventually moved that down to, to Tennessee to be closer to our feedstock supply. In 2022, after testing in the pilot plant was confirmed, we began the, the construction of the module one commercial plant. Uh, in 2023, the we have we were operational, and we were able to reach uh, design capacity um, of 2,500 pounds per day for one shift. So, this is where we are. This is how we've gotten here. It is a relatively quick process for something this complex, and we are proud of what we have been able to accomplish. Like I said, I want to reiterate, we are operational. Unlike a lot of different entities that are in this space, 
who are still at the lab scale and bench test. What does our module one do? Our module one will have the capacity to process 5,000 pounds per day. We are recovering in excess of 90% of the precious metals from retired catalytic converters. And it is a projected six to nine month build out for additional modules. When we decided to build, how we decided to build module one, we decided in a, in a module format to allow for efficient expansion and for better operational efficiencies. Planning's underway to increase the current facility to four modules with a, with a capacity of 10 tons per day. What is our process? So we take feedstock that contains CGM and we uh, put that into solution where the, where the PGMs are then stripped. We take this PGM rich solution and we separate it from solids and the PGMs are recovered via Maricrol process. Our last stage, step is to prepare black powder concentrate, which is shipped to third party refiners for ultimate sale. We are a sustainable solution. We, we are able to recover PGMs without the need for smelting or mining. And that puts us at 95% less CO2 emissions than mining, 99% less water, no tailings. And as compared to, to a smelter, a smelter produces 1500 kilograms of CO2 for every ton of feedstock that smelters process. Regenics is a key component of a circular economy for the PGM's recovery. What is our target market? Our target is a niche in the catalytic converter. We are looking to specialize in diesel silicon carbide converters. These are a niche because most smelters refuse to accept this type of catalytic converter as they cause processing and operational issues. We also have the ability to work in conjunction with smelters to divert this material from their system. Also, the diesel market segment, especially in the heavy duty and off-road vehicles are, are growing and will be converted to electrical at a much slower pace. Fundamentally, the recycling of diesel silicon carbide converters is an underserved market. Just some statistics that go in. There was 95.3 tons of platinum and 256.7 tons of palladium used in the manufacturing of catalytic converters in 2023. Only 35% was recycled. There are 27 million auto catalytic converters scrapped each year. And the average life cycle of a catalytic converter is around 10 years. The PGM market is growing and a lot of this growth is coming in the diesel sector. The diesel sector was the last sector that was affected by regulation. And the regulations have created that every diesel uh, engine is requiring emission controls all around the world. Uh, the latest was Chinese regulations that substantially increased the amount of catalytic converter uh, requirements. The growth in heavy duty is, is exponential. This growth has led to supply constraints. There has been an average shortfall of about 259,000 ounces of PGMs versus from demand to, to uh, supply. Supply is constrained. The predominant suppliers of PGMs 
are South Africa and Russia, which have infrastructure issues related to them. A new mine requires significant capital and a 10 year time, time horizon. And smelting capacity increases are very difficult to get approval for. Our partnership with, with Davis Recycling. Davis Recycling is one of the leading catalytic converter recyclers on the Eastern Seaboard. And their location in Eastern Tennessee has the ability to, to garner supply from the whole Eastern United States. They have over 20 years of experience and our facility, the Regenix facility and Davis's supply chains are within 30 minutes of each other. Our relationship with Davis unlikes, unlocks a path to have for supply for the four modules that we're anticipating. And they bring the key relationships with industry participants, both upstream and downstream. How the partnership operates. We will be running this partnership through a strategic subsidiary, PGM Renewal. PGM Renewal is owned 55% by Regenix, 45% by Davis. Davis secures the supply and then processes it from the raw catalytic converter into a fine grade powder that contains the PGM. That powder is brought to the Regenix facility and it works its way through and becomes a high quality concentrate, a black powder concentrate that we then ship to third parties for final processing. Milestones. So what have we accomplished recently? So we, we, are, we have proven that we can operate at 2,500 pounds per day. We are moving towards the scale up of module one from 2,500 to 5,000 pounds a day. We will be looking to bring online supply agreements for feedstock and offtake contracts. We are looking to commence the build out of module two to become cash flow positive from module one and then add in two additional modules to produce after that. But modules one and two, once op fully operational, will be producing 10,000 pounds per day. Longer term, we'll be moving to a 10, pun 10, ton 10 tons a day operation and achieving positive cash flow, uh, securing additional plants throughout the United States and abroad, international expansion the, by way of licensing, licensing and royalty strategies, Extam establishing other uh, feedstock and offtake partners, and then the potential for a carbon credit marketplace. Our team, we have a, we have a fairly, a, a very skilled, senior management team that includes Rick Purdy, who moved, who has ex entrepreneurial experience and moved down to the United States to, to start up our facility. Emily Richardson is our new CFO and Fabricio Mara is our director of R&D. We are also adding to this team a VP operations that we're in the process of finalizing the Personnel that we are looking at will be someone who has 25 years of industry experience and significant time with refiners and processors. We, our team is split out into our innovations team, which includes our research and allows us to have in-house lab capabilities, who, whose role is to actively assist in the operations, plus also investigate opportunities for expansion. Our operations team has a combination of fabrication and operations expertise who will be able to construct 
and uh, and bring on stream future modules. So as a as a recap, we are commercially operating a PGM recycling technology that's proprietary and eco-friendly. U.S. government regulations on PGMs combined with current supply deficit opens the door for more Regenix recycling plants and rapid expansion from Regenix initial module to a full scale four modules in the United States is on tap. We currently have 395 million shares outstanding and would be a fully diluted at about 438 million. We are currently in the process of doing a rights offering to fund our, our working capital so that we can facilitate the growth that we're planning. When we, as we do that rights offering, it will be, if fully subscribed, we would add an additional 395 million shares and soon right after that with shareholders approval, we'll do a two for one stock split to bring us back to the same current shares outstanding. So with that, I'd like to uh, invite Trevor to provide some more information. Thank you, Don. We will now open it up to questions. If you do have any questions, again, you can submit them in the Zoom Q&A module. Let's kick off with uh, some of the questions that were submitted in the registration uh, during the registration process. So Don, there's a lot of questions on the operational front um, and the current status of such. Uh, can you touch on this a little bit? Sure. So we are just producing minimal minimal production right now. We are waiting for the funds from the rights offering to provide us the required working capital to purchase additional feedstock and to add the second shift we had talked about. So as we are we are making plans, we are we are ensuring everything is in place to be able to move forward once we have the working capital that the rights offering is going to produce. So let's dig a little deeper on that. Uh, from the time of completing the current rights, rights offering, uh, can you provide some clarity on next steps to reach two and a half tons per day and possibly then becoming cash flow positive? Sure. Perhaps on a timeline basis, if you can. Sure. So our initial thought is that it is going to be about 60 days to be at the full two and a half tons. Um, with the combination of purchasing and time delay of bringing in product and for the actual hiring and training of the additional staff for the second crew. So we project about 60 days on that. And at that point, we should be in, uh, in the full production. And it seems like uh, stakeholders are uh, very eager to understand the the timeline here. So presumably, as, as capital comes in, you put that to work, develop a runway, uh, go through the process of scaling up uh, and understanding the the efficiencies and so on. You, you should be able to provide a little bit more clarity to stakeholders on the timeline as it relates to uh, additional modules and ramping up and and further engagement with customers. Correct. Correct. Okay. Can you provide an update on the black powder concentrate and Regenix's process with its prospective customers? Sure. So there's a, there's a little confusion some in what we've seen some things. Just to understand what we do is this is a new product. So some of the delays, some of the information is that we are shipping it to various refiners and they are reviewing the product just so that they understand exactly what we're sending uh, because it's different than anything that they received before. So they are just, they do their testing. They do that to make sure that there's nothing in it that there was, would be a contaminant, would be something that they wouldn't want to process. And we have not, in the products that we have shipped, um, they've come back that they are acceptable, that the clients like them, that they are uh, they are excited about the the ability to get more 
of the black powder from our facilities. Um, questions on the economic side of it, this is where we're under NDAs. We are under NDAs with these guys on terms, on commercial terms, commercial um, pieces. It is a highly competitive marketplace, and we are not uh, we are not allowed to discuss what the commercial uh, terms we are working with with the refiners. So, in other words, to stay competitive uh, and to keep uh, prices competitive, uh, it's it seems like it is in your best interest to keep that confidential uh, for you know future conversations with other customers, right? Yes, and it's a requirement from the smelters because they don't want their prices shot in the marketplace. Makes sense. Another question here, are we going to see, are we going to be processing platinum palladium, which is the case here, but how about rhodium? So our current facility and our current process does not capture rhodium. Um, our innovation team is is investigating how we might go about that, but it's also not a critical piece at this moment as the majority of diesel catalytic converters don't have rhodium in them. But it is in the plans for possible future expansion, right? Yes. Okay. How many uh, Regenix modules does Davis Recycling uh, currently, uh, how much can it support from a feedstock perspective? So they haven't purchased the feedstock yet. Um, we haven't purchased the feedstock yet, but they have constructed a processing facility that has more capacity than the 10 tons that we are looking at. They recently put out some, uh, some video on LinkedIn that showed their, their, their increased capacity, and they have the ability to provide more than 10 tons a day for us. And uh, Don, uh, the relationship with Davis is uh, certainly strategic. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the location uh, of the plant uh, and and Davis uh, and how that should uh, you know cover the eastern seaboard, and and then you can talk about perhaps expansion outside. Sure. So Tennessee is a is a central hub to most of the transportation in the eastern seaboard of US. Uh, there's a reason that uh, that FedEx had their original um, facility located in Tennessee, um, as it's, a, a, it's close enough to almost every major place to facilitate uh, effective transportation of materials up and down there. They, they are going to be critical and their current supply chain basis allows us a competitive advantage to secure the diesel catalytic converters because they already have relationships and um, pickups from the majority of locations which the diesel catalytic converters are coming from. Thank you, Dom. What is Regenix's plan on funding the future growth of the company? So, where we're sitting right now is that the current rights offering provides us the working capital needed to get up to a revenue producing and profitability baseline that sets us with the ability to, to access additional financing that we'll be able to use for expansion financing. Um, we are sitting in a current position where the most of the financing uh, providers don't want to give you the access to capital until you are proven that you can produce revenue and profitability. And once we have that with module one, which our current uh, uh, financing rights offering will allow, there are other uh, traditional financing opportunities that we have been negotiating with on 
to be able to facilitate expansion. Don, were, were there other alternatives uh, that you guys investigated uh, before pushing forward with the rights offering? Um, uh, in other words, maybe uh, did you envision selling any other assets? So there, we did look at at all kinds of different um, pieces. Most of them were predatory type uh, type uh, um, op uh, offers and uh, and weren't uh, effective for the long term. We the the legacy mining asset has been investigated to be sold, and we have been spent considerable amount of time on dealing with uh, with uh, with other entities on selling that piece, but we have not been able to close a transaction at this point in time. Thank you. All right, so has the company entered a backstop agreement for any unsubscribed rights? And if so, how much is the committed agreement? We have not. Um, we have not entered a backstop at this point in time. We are investigating the opportunity of uh, of seeing some potentials about coming in on that, but we do not have anything closed at this point in time. All right, we'll take a couple more questions here. Don, can, can you reiterate the update on the status of management C's trade order that was announced yesterday, May 13th? So the management cease trade is in place. It was a voluntary um, cease trade due to a issue we had with our, um, our with our audit company that our audit company was not able to complete our audit, and we had to find a alternative auditor to do it. The changing to the alternative auditor um, pushed the the completion date out past the the um, regulatory time frame. Um, it's expected to be published now. The our audit is expected to be published by the end of May, and so as part of that, we we initiated a management cease trade um, for that additional time, and that cease trade will will be taken off once we issue the uh, the audited statements. Thanks, Don. It does seem like the puzzle pieces are coming into play here uh, with regards to the operational uh, status as well as the, on the capital market side and compliance side. So it's good to see that you know things are coming into play here. Um, last question. I'll put the ball on your court, Don. Could you please provide uh, a summary and, and reiterate for stakeholders uh, on Regenix's near-term milestones that everyone can look forward to? So we're looking to to close the close the rights offering um get the financial audit issued then hire the second crew get our our supply chain um initiated to bring on additional uh feedstock have the operations running at uh, at 5000 pounds a day and then look to to start the the process of adding a second module to our facility and with those that will set us down into a quite exciting path for the future thank you don and thanks to everyone for joining today uh as a reminder please keep an eye out for regenix's brief investor survey which we'll be emailing you all shortly your opinions are important to management as the trends in that uh, from that survey will help strengthen Regenix's investor communications efforts and guide the focus of upcoming events. Today's recording will soon be made available on the company's website at regenix.tech. If you have any additional questions that have not been addressed or that have not already been submitted, please email investors at regenix.tech so management can review and respond to accordingly. Again, that's Regenix investors at regenix.tech. Thanks again. That concludes today's presentation. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. You are now free to disconnect. Thank you.